There's no such thing as a millihertz. I can't take I can't take a I can't take a number that's less than one and divide it into one and get a number smaller than what I started off. Yeah, I want to know three. Huh? Forty-one hertz. So I don't know how y'all's getting nearly right. You okay? If I look at my function generator, this is the guy that's generated it for me. What does it say? Forty-two. Pretty, pretty good. Okay. So y'all see how how to do that? Everybody okay? So what? What is it? How do we do that? Yeah, one over time would give me the frequency, right? Everybody okay? Or the reciprocal? We call that the reciprocal, and we do that so much because it gives us the opposite of that scientific calculators have a reciprocal key on. Could be x to the minus 1. If we take any number and raise it to the minus 1 power, it takes the reciprocal. Everybody okay? Uh, to measure my voltage, so this is the voltage right here, and we call this peak to peak. So in AC, we have peaks. So this would be minus. So right now, I have my zero volt reference set right on this zero line. So anything below this line would be a minus. Anything above this line would be a positive. So if I want to calculate my peak to peak voltage, I need to measure from the bottom to the top. Well, it gets kind of confusing because here we got minor divisions to deal with here, and here we got minor divisions to deal with that. So normally what I do is I'll take this because I know it's AC. I know it's AC, right? You understand that? But I'll take this one which is my my horizontal position and I'll exert I'll exert it till I I'll, I'm going to move it till I get it on the line now I have now I have a reference right you understand that and then I'll take this one and I'll move it until I get it on my center because that's where most of my that's where my very well defined uh, minor divisions are you see what I did and then I'm going to measure this so I've got it on five volts per division. Y'all can't see it now. Can y'all see it now? Five volts per division. So what would my voltage be? Well, I'd count them. I'd go one, two, three, four, point two, four, six. So that's going to be what? Four point six times five. And that's the amount of peak to peak voltage. Twenty three volts, peak to peak. Are we okay? Everybody okay? And of course, if I increase the frequency, the time goes down. So I'm going to change the frequency. Oh, that's just the voltage. Right? So the frequency goes up, time goes down, the frequency goes down, this goes up. Everybody okay? Any questions? Okay. Now, if we were to go over there and look at that encoder, what we get off of the encoder is we get something that looks like this. And this is called a pulse waveform. A lot of people would call it a square wave, but it could, it might not be a square wave because I'm going to come up here and do this. Okay. And so notice I'm not changing the frequency. So if I look at this guy right here, it don't move. And that guy right there, this doesn't move. So what I'm doing now is I'm changing what we talked about the other day. I'm, ch I'm changing what we call the duty cycle. Everybody okay so far? Now this is AC. Normally off an encoder, uh, you wouldn't get AC. Normally off an encoder, you would get DC. But I'm not going to go through just and get DC. Now what we do, what we get off an encoder is we have so many blades or we have so many pulses per revolution. So the first thing you would need to know to be able to calculate, figure out what speed you're reading off that encoder. The encoder does not give you a speed. The encoder gives you a series of pulses that is occurring at a certain rate, right? You understand? So if you know the number of pulses per revolution, then you should be able to calculate speed. Everybody okay? And so what you have to do on your PLC, if your PLC does the, the does the speed, your encoder is going to give you pulses, and then it's up to you to write a program that does what? Converts that to a speed. Okay, so let's pump this thing up. So I'm going to come up here and 
So this is five kilohertz. Well, let's say uh, let's say my encoder. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the speed of my scope. That's what we do. This right here. So notice when I if my if my speed of my pulses are faster, then I have to increase the speed of my scope. So now we're at one millisecond per degree. Okay, so let's say our encoder has eight eight pulses per revolution. So how fast will my motor be going? Well, the the the, the encoder is going to give me a time, but what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to take that time and relate it to a watt, to a to a revolutions per minute. We're going to have to write the time to a frequency that's going to be per revolution, and then we'll multiply that by sixty, and that would give us our RPM. Everybody follow me so far? Well, what will we do? Well, first of all, I'm going to measure the time. And uh, I'll get it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and put uh, either this line or that line. I'm going to line it up on an edge. And then I'm going to measure the amount of time. So I go one, two, three, four, five. So that's five. I've got it on 500 microseconds per division. So what would that be? Got it. So I'm going from rising edge to rising edge. We call this the rising edge. We call that the falling edge. So I'm going from rising edge to rising edge. I go one, two, three, four, five. I have it on five five hundred microseconds per division. So that'd be two thousand five hundred microseconds or two point five milliseconds. Right? You understand? Okay. Now that would be the time between pulses. But I'm getting eight pulses per revolution. So what would I do next in my PLC program to get the time per revolution? Huh? So I would multiply this by what? By the number of pulses per revolution. So I would take the 2.5 milliseconds and I would multiply it times eight. Everybody follow me so far? Okay. And that would give me the time for one revolution. But we're still in what? We're still in milliseconds, right? You understand? Then I'm going to take what? Now I got to get that. Now I got to get a, I'm going to convert it from a time to a rate. So what am I going to do? A time to a frequency. I'm going to take the reciprocal of that. What do we get? What's that given? 60? 50? Okay. So that gives us 50. So that's 50 revolutions per second. Right? You all understand? Because we've been dealing with seconds. So when we came up here, we said this was 2.5 milliseconds. When I took the reciprocal, when I'm, uh, when I took the reciprocal of that, that would be what? That would be hertz. We want to get revolution. So now we got revolutions per second. I need revolutions per minute. So what do I do with that? Number? Uh, uh, by divide by, by sixty. So what would be the speed of this motor? Three thousand rp. And that's what you would have to do in your program. Your encoder has no idea what speed it's going. All it's doing is it's sending you a sequence of what? Of pulses. Now, if you, but I don't understand pulses. RPM, by the way, is an international standard. That's the rate of a rotational motor is RPM, revolution per minute. Because everybody deals with the minutes, right? And everybody understands revolution. So if I was going to do, display the speed on an indicator that my PLC was running, 
My encoder doesn't know speed. All it knows is I'm giving this many pulses per revolution. Right? Y'all understand that? So 3,000 RP. So it's almost time to go. Let's see if y'all can do this one. So let's change the speed of the pulse. So we're going to go faster. I'm going to try to get it leveled out so it uh, works out. And we've actually got an encoder with a motor. So what? How many? What's my time? Can y'all see what it's? This is 100 microseconds per second. I come over and count the numbers here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that'd be what? Nine microseconds. What would I do next? I multiply it by I multiply it by the number of pulses per revolution I'm getting from my encoder. Here we're still using eight, so I multiply that times eight. Right? Everybody okay so far? Then I would do what? I'll take the reciprocal of that and multiply it by 60. I've got a PLC problem that does this. It's pretty slick. Yeah, that would be a fast motor. <laughs> but we can go over there. We can we can see what speed is on that motor over there. All I have to do is know the number of pulses per revolution. Right? You understand that? If I know what my, my, my coder is, and that's part of the... That's part of the documentation that comes with your encoders, how many pulses you get per revolution. The more the more pulses you get per revolution, the more precise the encoders is. And then the more it's the more expensive it gets, right? So if I was to look at the encoders on that robot over there, it's got a thousands of them. Because it's gotta be what well, really, really precise. Uh, not only on but Encoders, not only can we use them to sense uh, speed, we can also use them to sense, to sense distance too. So if I know I'll get, I know if I got so many pulses per revolution, and I know how far my thing moves per revolution, right, you understand, then we can also use encoders to calculate speed. So, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, we can use calculate position. So an encoder, and this is why they're so popular, because I can use them for speed, and I can use them for position. Uh, we'll look at this one over there. It's called a quadrature encoder, and I think we looked at that, right? So it outputs two pulses that are off off about 45 degrees, depending on which one's go, which direction it's going. So if it's running one direction, this guy here might lag by 45 degrees. If it runs the other one, then it's going to lead by 45 degrees. So with encoders, with quadrature encoders, we can tell the speed, we can tell the distance, and we can tell the direction off of one sensor. But then I've got to get into my, and, and we have PLCs now that handle quadrature encoders for you. They'll, they'll give you all that information uh, already built into the PLC because they're so, uh, these guys are so popular because we can do a lot of things. So if I give you a time and I give you the number of encoders, the number of pulses per revolution, can you convert that into a C? Huh? I'm sure I can do it here, but when it comes on the test, you're... <laughs> <laughs> and so that's on the test. This is, and by the way, a lot of the questions that we're putting on this test, except for symbols and stuff like that, those are the ones that I put on there. All those that have graphics with them, guys, this is off one of the Siemens one level tests. And why we try to do that is to try to get you a feel of what's on that thing. It covers mechatronics, which means it's not only electronics, it's also what? Okay. Mechanics. You know, so are we cool, okay? All right, guys. Gotcha. It's called the level one. It's called SMSCP, Siemens Certified Mechatronics. I don't know. <laughs>